Whoa, there I am. Hey, math students. Uh, you remember when you first learned a factor? Uh, probably what your teacher did is uh, presented you with um, some binomials and you multiplied the binomials and then your teacher said, now let's go backwards. And then you took that trinomial or, you know, you took the product of those uh, binomials and you learned how to factor, you learned how to go backwards. Well, today we're going to do a kind of similar thing. What we're going to do is we're going to take a messy looking fraction, okay, a messy looking rational function, and we're going to decompose that into what's called partial fractions, okay? So the first thing we need to do is remember how to add and subtract fractions, okay? And uh, I, I know you started doing this in fourth grade, but let's do it anyway. It's, it's, it's worth checking out. So we have, let's take 3 over x minus 2, and we're going to subtract 9 over x plus 5. So what do we do to subtract those fractions? Well, I think most of y'all are going to say, well, you got to get a common denominator. And so you're going to do x minus 2 here and x minus 2 there. And then we'll do x plus 5 here and x plus 5 there. All right? Does that look kind of uh, familiar? And then, so that means I'm going to have, oh, what does that mean? I'm going to have uh, uh, x plus 5 times x minus 2 in my denominator. And in the numerator, I have 3x plus 15 minus 9x minus negative gets me plus 18 there in the numerator. And 3x minus 9x is negative 6x. 15 plus 18 is plus 33. And that's over, let me multiply that together, I get x squared plus 3x minus 10. Okay, not rocket science. This is a review. You should know how to do this, okay? All we did is we just subtracted those fractions and we got this rational expression, all right? Now, what we're doing today is we're saying, let's start with this and decompose it to get smaller fractions. Now, you may have a question pop into your head, which is a perfectly valid question, and that question is, why? Why do I have to do this? Well, it's not going to pay off right now but it's going to pay off in the future. When you're studying calculus, you're going, to be, you're going to be calculating these things called derivatives and integrals. And to calculate the derivative or integral of a messy thing like this is, well, it's messy, okay? However, if you can simplify it and make some simpler expressions, well, then I can just take, take the derivative of this and take the derivative of that and subtract those derivatives and life becomes much easier, okay? So although the payoff's not going to be right now, this is going to make your life easier in the future. All right, let's start with our first example. Let's start with, um, oh, let me get a good one. Okay, I'm going to take 5x plus 5 over x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay? And I want to decompose that into partial fractions. <clears throat> okay, step one, factor the denominator. So this is going to be 5x plus 5 over uh, 21 is 7 times 3. So this will be x minus 7 times x plus 3. Okay, that looks about right. So the two partial fractions that we're going to come up with are going to be something over x minus 7 and something over x plus 3. We don't know what those somethings are right now, so let's just call them a and b. Okay? Now, this, what we're going to do now is just add those fractions together just like we did a second ago. Okay? That means you get uh, x minus 7 over x minus 7, and this is going to be uh, x plus 3 over x plus 3, okay? And so that means I'm going to have ax plus 3a plus bx minus 7b, okay? ax plus 3a, that's just the a times x plus 3. bx minus 7b, that's just the b times x minus 7. And the whole thing is over, of course, x squared minus 4x minus 21. And I'm going to regroup this and I'm going to put the x's together. I'm going to call this a plus b times x. 
and then plus 3a minus 7b over x squared minus 4x minus 21. Now, the, here's, where, uh, here, here's, here's where the cool part comes in, okay? So what we have here is we have something times x plus something else equals something times x plus something else. And they're both over x squared minus 4x minus 21. So what that means is this a plus b must be equal to 5. And this 3a minus 7b must also be equal to 5, but for a different reason, because it has to be equal to this 5. Okay, this is the coefficient being multiplied times x, which is 5. And this is our constant term, which is also 5. Okay, well, cool. That just gives me a couple of... Uh, uh, um, just gives me a system of equations. So a plus b equals 5, and 3a minus 7b also equals 5. And if I want to solve that, hmm, I guess I would say I'm going to multiply this times uh, 7. And so I'll get 7a plus 7b equals 35, okay? Obviously, I multiply it times 7 to get rid of the b's there. And so that gives me 10a equals 40, and a must equal 4, okay? If a equals 4 and a plus b is 5, I think I know what b is. b's got to be 1. Okay? What does this tell us? Well, it tells us what the answer is. Because remember how uh, this was equal to a over x minus 7 plus b over x plus 3? Well, now we know what a and b are. So that means this equals uh, 4 over x minus 7 plus 1 over x plus 3. And show enough, if you add those fractions together, you will see that they equal this thing that we started with. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah, you know it's cool. Let's do another one. Uh, let's try... Let's try a slightly different one. Let's try, uh, where am I? Okay, yeah, y'all can see this. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 35, and that's gonna be divided by x squared minus 5x plus six. Okay, so that's what we're starting with, and um, First thing you might notice is, hey, the numerator's got a higher degree than the denominator does. Uh, this is an improper fraction. So before we do anything else, we should divide this thing. Man, if only I knew how to divide polynomials. I do. Of course I do. So let me just, uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is going to go into 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 35. x squared goes into 2x cubed 2x times. Now, when I do this, I'm not going to multiply 2x times this thing. I'm going to multiply negative 2x times this thing because that actually makes more sense because if you remember, you end up subtracting polynomial minus polynomial. If I multiply this times negative, I can just add them up. So this is going to give me negative 2x cubed plus 10x squared minus 12x. Okay, add them up. If these things don't eliminate each other, then I messed up somewhere, okay? That always has to uh, uh, equal zero. So this is gonna be 5x squared minus 28x plus 35. x squared goes into 5x squared five times. Negative five times x squared gets me negative 5x squared plus 25x minus 30, and that adds up to negative 3x uh, plus 5. So this is plus negative 3x plus 5 over uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6. Hey, y'all, that part right there, the remainder, that's what we can decompose into partial fractions. Okay, so let's do it. We have negative 3x plus 5 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals something over, let's, uh, um, 
factor our denominator there. That's going to be, what's that? x minus 2 times x minus 3. So it's going to be something over x minus 2 plus something over x minus 3. Can you see that? I think you can see that. Um, okay, uh, so that's going to equal a times x minus 3 plus b times x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, I just multiplied this fraction times x minus 3 over x minus 3. I multiplied this fraction times x uh, minus 2 over x minus 2. And so now, uh, distributing the a and b and rearranging my terms, I get a plus b times x minus 3a minus 2b over x squared minus 5x plus 6. And what does that mean? That means a plus b has got to equal negative 3. And negative 3a minus 2b has to equal 5. Okay. Uh, well, let me just multiply this times uh, 2. And if I do that, again, I'm getting rid of my b's. So if I do that, I get 2a plus 2b equals negative 6. Adding that up, I get negative a equals negative 1, and a must be 1. And if a is 1 and a plus b is negative 3, I think I know what b is. b is negative 4. What does all this mean? Well, it means my answer is going to be this, except I'm going to call it 2x plus 5 plus a over, so 1 over x minus 2 minus 4 over x minus 3. And that is my answer. All right. Uh, again, we started with a messy, messy, messy fraction, and we end up with a sum of terms, all of which are significantly less messy. One more for you. Okay, that's our messy fraction we're starting with. Uh, step one, factor the denominator, right? Okay, whoa, it's a cubic. This is not a quadratic, this is a cubic. Oh man, can I factor cubics? Sure I can. It's factored by grouping. Uh, I'll take an x squared out of the first two and I'm left with x minus five. And then I'll take a negative four out of the second two and I'm left with x minus five. That means this is x squared minus four times x minus five. And I can keep going here. This is a difference of squares. So this is x minus two times x plus two times x minus five. All right, so what does that mean? It means that this is gonna be something over x minus two plus something over x plus two plus something over x minus five. Ooh, three terms. We can do this. Okay. All right, let me warn you, it's gonna get a little messy, but at the end, it's gonna clean itself up very nicely. So, what does this mean? It means that this is gonna be equal to, uh, I gotta multiply all of these together. So this is gonna be a times x plus two times x minus five plus b times x minus two times x minus five. Can y'all still see this? I think you can. Uh, plus c times x minus two times x plus two. Can you still see that over there? I think you barely can. All right, I'm trying to squeeze this in. All of this is over x minus two times x plus two times x minus five. All right. Okay, so this is ax squared minus three ax minus 10a, that's our first one, plus bx squared uh, minus seven bx plus 10b plus cx squared minus 4c. Everything is over uh, this thing that we had at the very beginning. x cubed uh, minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 20. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a plus b plus c times x squared 
my x's are negative 3a minus 7b. Uh, that's it, times x. And my constant terms are minus 10a plus 10b minus 4c over that same thing. How are we doing so far? Okay, good. Me too. I'm fine. So this means that a plus b plus c has to equal 3. And negative 3a minus 7b has to equal negative 38. And negative 10a plus 10b minus 4c has to equal 52. Whoo, baby. All right. Uh, let's start by combining these two lines, getting rid of the c's. So I'm going to multiply my top line uh, by 4, okay? And that'll get me 4a plus 4b plus 4c equals 12. And if I add those up, I get uh, negative 6a uh, plus 14b equals 64. And if I just divide both sides by, oh my God, I'm running out of space. So if I divide those both by 2, that's going to get me negative 3a plus 7b equals 32. Combining that with this one here, I'm going to get, uh, let's see, negative 3a minus 7b equals negative 38. Adding those up, I get negative, negative 6 times a equals negative 6, so a equals 1. Okay, if a equals 1, then that means I get negative 3 minus 7b is negative 38. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I get negative 7b equals negative 35. That means b equals 5. And if a is 1 and b is 5, then a plus b is 6. 6 plus c is 3. c's got to be negative 3. Okay, uh, I'm filling it up pretty well. So that means what's my answer going to be? It's going to be, let me just get rid of this part right now. It's going to be equal to a is 1. So that's going to be 1 over x minus 2 plus 5 over x plus 2 plus, oops, not plus, minus 3 over x minus 5. And that's my answer to the partial fraction decomposition of this thing that we started off with. Okay. Now, there are other types of examples, okay? This is all we're going to do today. But uh, next video, I'll show you a couple of other uh, types of problems that are going to require a slightly different strategy. But that's for the next video. This is enough for you right now. Bye-bye.